different uh, blockages on the path of devotional service, which are the things we struggle with. And in this case here, um, the killing of Dina Kasura, is that there are two demons that Balaram kills directly. And Balaram, he's connected with the spiritual master. He is the foundation by which we execute devotional service under the guidance of Krishna's pure representative, the bona fide spiritual master. Come closer. <laughs> We're all vegetarians, don't worry about it. <laughs> okay, thank you. And this particular, these two demons require your own personal effort along with the mercy of the Lord, both. This is, these are kind of unique within the category of elimination of article, uh -uh, of elimination of an artist, is that one has to make a personal effort to recognize these particular an artist and work in a, what we say, a certain way to destroy the obstacles. In other words, not to feed into them, to avoid them and pray for the mercy of the Lord. And they represent Lord Balaram. That's why in this this section you'll hear about two demons. One is called Dano Kasura. And the pastime goes that Krishna and Balaram were in the forest and they were playing with all their friends. Which they always do. And the friends you know, came, some of them came back from another forest and said, Hey, Krishna, you know, there's this other forest, it's named Taliban, and there are so many beautiful, tall trees with this beautiful, tasty, very succulent, sweet fruit, and we really want some. So get us some. <laughs> because, you know, when the bang, the Christian, when the cowherd boys want something, they go to Krishna, <laughs> or Balaram. So Krishna was thinking, all right, let's, maybe we can also enjoy some of these fruits. But the problem was, this forest was Kamsa's forest, and he had put this demon, along with his associates, to guard the forest, and to bring the fruits to him. Nobody else was getting it. And Danuk was the, you know, more or less the guardian and the servant of Kamsa. And so, and he's in the form of an ass, a donkey. <laughs> and Prabhupada used to say, donkey is uh, nature's Mack truck. <laughs> if you want to get some work done, at least in the more simplified area of life, you, uh, you get a donkey and you load him on with a lot of uh, things that you want moved from one place to another. And you hang a carrot in front of his nose, Prashad, you know. <laughs> and for him, that's, you know, that's like Sunday feast. <laughs> so he's very much uh, inclined to chase after these things, and he moves your load along. But, and he also, sometimes we give him grass, what Prabhupada says. The grass is available right there in front of him, but he thinks I have to work in order to get the grass. So this mentality of working f simply for the basic things in life is, is, is uh, what we call ass mentality, working hard simply to maintain this body. And so he represents laziness, bad habits from previous lives, and lethargy, and, and pretty much ignorance. So Balaram, the, the pure spiritual master represented, is the person that can help us overcome any of these characteristics that may be there in our practice of Krishna consciousness. And so, Krishna and Balaram, along with the, the, go, the uh, Cowherd boys, they go to the forest, and there's a and they see all these beautiful, high, very high trees, tall trees, 
nice, beautiful fruits. And so Balaram immediately he jumps in and starts shaking the trees and fruits are falling to the ground. He's picking up and he's enjoying the fruits and he's he's having a nice little, you know, meal. <laughs> and all of a sudden it arouses Danuk. So he comes and he said, Who's oh, in my forest? What's going on here? Who's that person? And so he gets angry and he runs. He's a donkey. And he's running full speed. <laughs> And he, sorry about that. <laughs> it was actually it was he, the noise was quite subdued, it was much louder than that. <laughs> okay, Sri Sri Krishna Balaram Ki Jai Jagannath Baladev Subhadra Gornatai Ki Jai. And uh, kicks Balaram full force in the chest. And for Balaram, that's like a little breeze hitting him. <laughs> it's like nothing, you know. So he's, he's thinking, you know, there's some disturbance, but I'm going on. So he continues eating his fruit. And Dano keeps thinking, hmm, I'm going to try again. So he backs up. This time he puts it in high gear. <laughs> and he runs full force. And again, when he, he kicks Balaram in the chest. And... Uh, Father Rama says, that's enough of this, you know. <laughs> so he grabs him by the hind legs and he just <laughs> he throws him into a tree and while he's spinning around he's kinda like he's gone, he's finished. <laughs> Centrifugal force death, you know, he died by Sometimes we spin like that in, in, in Kirtan and we fall over or something. <laughs> but we're still alive because it's Kirtan. <laughs> and so, uh, yeah, the Dano is finished and he hits the tree. When he hits the tree, one tree hits another tree, it collapses and hits another tree. And the trees are falling down and all the fruits are falling down, all the cowherd boys and Krishna's come, yay, we got some nice fruits, they're all picking it up, wow, this is like a Sunday feast at Zurich Temple, and see, not a Krishna, so it's really nice. So they're enjoying all these nice fruits and then Dainuk has a group of friends, they're his associates, cohorts, you might say, and uh, they join in. And uh, they, they start chasing after Balaram and Krishna. <laughs> and Balaram and Krishna just don't want to be bothered. You know, it's prasadam time. You know, when you're taking prasadam, you don't want to be bothered. <laughs> so <laughs> they're grabbing these, these, these demons and just flinging them up in the tree. And it says, as it's described in his pastime, it was a beautiful panoramic sight because each of these diff different demon asses were different colors, so it looked like a nice rainbow. Because <laughs> when the Lord touches something, it becomes auspicious. <laughs> so this demon was killed. So this demon, as we mentioned, represents, I'll actually read a little bit that's mentioned here, of Dana Gusara's demise here, just to Reiterate, Dainagasur was a powerful demon who assumed the form of an ass. With his demon's friends, he was occupying Taliban, one of the twelve forests of Vindavan. Out of fear of these demons, no one could approach Taliban and enjoy the numerous flowers and fruits in the forest. Balaram, induced by his cowherd friends, entered the forest desiring to kill these demons. He began shaking the fruit trees, making a big noise. Dainuk, furious at the intrusion, attacked Balaram with his rear legs, but Balaram easily picked him up by his legs and whirled him around until he died. As the other demon friends of Dainuk rushed to attack, Krishna and Balaram picked them up and threw them on the trees, killing them. Soon the forest was free of all demons, and it appeared that the bent trees were being directed by Balaram to pay obeisances to Krishna. <laughs> so. When Krishna and Balaram kill demons, it's actually a very wonderful experience, both for the demons and for everyone. <laughs> so this is, uh, so it mentions that we need to pray to our spiritual master and work in such a way as to eliminate this, these anarthas represented by this particular demon. 
So this is very fundamental to the practice of devotional service. Because as we practice devotional service, there will be obstacles. There's no doubt about it. That is the nature of being, having a material body and being in the material world. And these obstacles sometimes are our own attachments to material desires, which we want to fulfill. And sometimes we find it's a conflict. We still want them, but at the same time they cause us problems. So the mercy comes from the spiritual master, who is the representative of the Lord Balaram. So therefore, Prabhupada used to say, we should pray to Lord Balaram for spiritual strength. For spiritual strength. He can give spiritual strength. The word Bala means strength or power. And the word Rama means one who enjoys pleasure by using. So Balarama actually means one who enjoys using his strength, but that strength is not physical strength, it's spiritual strength. So we want, if we need the mercy of Lord Balaram, we pray to him in order to help us remove those, those obstacles. Because as Srila Prabhupada, who is the representative of the superior spiritual masters, or I'm the Supreme Personality of Godhead, one devotee said to Prabhupada, Oh, Prabhupada, you know, you know, I'm meeting with so many obstacles in my devotional service. Prabhupada said, you just come to me and I can kick out. <laughs> he said, kick out all of these obstacles with one swish of my foot. <laughs> so, yeah, if we actually take shelter in a serious way to our spiritual master and we work accordingly, to their directions, then there's no obstacles in devotional service. If we try to overcome the obstacles themselves, we may get a little bit of success, but we can never rid ourselves without the mercy of the Lord as required. Okay, so, and the second, I'll read about the second demon that is also connected with Lord Balaram. And this I'll read a little bit. This is the killing of a Palambasura. Once, when Krishna and Balaram were playing with the cowherd boys, a demon named Palamba entered their midst, disguised as a cowherd boy. Understanding the invincible potency of Krishna, he had instead decided to abduct Balaram. At the end of the game, as the losing party, he was supposed to carry Balaram on his shoulders. Carrying the Lord on his shoulders, he ran swiftly, but Balaram, realizing the true identity of the demon, began to make himself heavier and heavier. Unable to bear the weight, the demon assumed his original form, which was like a huge, dark, effulgent clown decorated with golden ornaments. Balaram then brought his fist on the head of the demon, splitting it in two and causing him to give up his life. I have to do this to get rid of some frustration sometimes. <laughs> Sanyas life, you know. <laughs> Please excuse me. <laughs> so, yeah, so this is an example of how, again, in the relationship to this particular demon. So what does Palumbus Sora represent? He represents, he represents illicit or wrong and unauthorized connection with the opposite sex. <laughs> and this is the material world, and this is the Adiras, now become the, uh, the, what we call, the obstacle in our practice of Krishna consciousness. So there is connection with the opposite sex, but it has to be done on according to religious principles. And then it will develop into a relationship that is beneficial for both. But if it's not done that way, then it takes a person's mind away from devotional service. And one gravitates down to more of a, more of a, a 
desire to enjoy the senses it becomes very, very mean. And so uh, this demon, Palumbus Sura, represents that illicit connection to the opposite sex. And we all know that this is a very great stumbling block in the path of devotional service. And therefore, Balaram, his mercy, which is manifested in the form of the guru, in our efforts, again, we emphasize this point, one has to make that effort to overcome this wrong association. And that requires some prayer from the mercy of the Lord, and at the same time, carefully trying to avoid those traps that, that one can fall in that will exacerbate or to enhance one's wrong dealings. So again, you have to make a personal effort. <laughs> when it comes to the demons that Krishna killed, by the power of your own devotional service, you can overcome the, the, each of those anarthas that, that those demons represent. But the two that Balaram killed are different because we have to make not only pray for the mercy, make the effort, but we have to always we have to always make sure that we don't get trapped by these uh, wrong desires. <laughs> so it's a conscious effort in that way. So these are some of the. So Lord Balaram is there. And he is very merciful, and. Uh, we glorify Lord Balaram as the Supreme Personality of Godhead who likes to serve the Lord. He is the Lord, but he likes to serve the Lord. Therefore, it's explained that he is also known as Servitor Godhead. He is the Supreme Personality of Godhead who serves Krishna in the role of a servant. In other words, he assists the Lord in all of his pastimes. We were mentioning this morning that Lord Balaram appears in all five of the rasas. Neutrality, Dasyaras, servitorship, Sakyaras, Vatsayaras, parental affection, and Madhuryaras. So Balaram is always in the mood of thinking or doing how, how to assist the Lord in every aspect of his pastimes. So in the, in the neutrality, and this is important for devotees to understand, he appears as the shoes of Krishna. So on the altar sometimes we have the Lord's padukas, his shoes. They are actually none different than Lord Balaram. They're not just, you know, shoes. They're actually a manifestation of Lord Balaram. The Lord's clothing is also Lord Balaram. His different dresses. Uh, the artsy paraphernalia by which we use to worship the Lord is an expansion of Lord Balaram. The umbrella, sometimes we see the Lord is in this umbrella over the head of the Lord. That is also Lord Balaram. And sometimes, not sometimes, but in certain cases, the jewelry that the, the Lord wears is also Lord Balaram. So those of you who do pajari work, you should be very much aware that these things that you're placing upon the Lord are actually none different than the Lord in one sense, in the real sense. Now some of the jewelry, not all of the jewelry, is actually Balaram. <laughs> and that's like, because not all jewelry is bona fide, you know. So we use, sometimes we use these costume stuff, which is really not, it's imitation jewelry. But real jewelry is Balaram. Mm -hmm. So yeah, it's a, and so and the Lord likes to serve the Lord, the Lord serving the Lord in the mood of in the mood of uh, neutrality or neutral or uh, assisting. And uh, Dasyaras mentions in a general statement he serves the Lord in different ways. He just thinks of different ways to serve. And Sakyaras, he becomes the friend of Krishna. And they're both in the mood of uh, you know, cowherd boys. Mm -hmm. 
And in that in that relationship, he plays with Krishna in different games with the different different uh, associates of Krishna in Sakya Ras. And Vatsalya Ras, he appears as the older brother of the Lord, and he takes care of Krishna when Krishna is going out to the fields and playing with the cows or serving the cows, or Krishna is playing with his friends. His mother Yasoda is always worried about Krishna. She said, he's going to get hurt, he's going to fall down, some dog is going to get him, or he's, something inauspicious is going to happen. So she feels happy when Balaram is there, because Balaram protects Krishna. So he's in the mood of Vatsalya Ras. We were speaking earlier today, the word Vatsalya, Vatsa means calf, it means calf. So why is that the terminology used for parental affection? Because the epitome of parental affection, as understood by Vedic culture, is the cow's love for the calf. And the cow's love for the calf. There is no greater form of motherly affection that is shown by the cow. And the example is given that if there is and say thousands of calves and there's a cow standing there, she'll know exactly where her calf is. You don't have to tell her, you don't have to show her. By her loving and mood towards her calf, she goes right to her calf. She'll bypass all the other calves. It's just the nature of cows. They have so much affection for their children. And so about Sayuras. And then the last one is Madhuryaras, and that is uh, Balaram becomes the younger sister of Srimati Radharani, known as Ananga Manjari. Hmm. So, I don't know too much about that. <laughs> um, there's not much mentioned in the scriptures. I told a little personal story this morning what happened to me when I made this same lecture in the very August assembly of great Vaishnavas in the Ukraine festival when there were thousands of devotees, not thousands, about 8,000 devotees, I had to give a class. And I was speaking the same thing. And then I said, well, Balaram appears as Ananga Manjari, the younger sister of Srimati Radharani. And I thought, yeah. That's right. So at the end of the class, I went back to my room and I hear, Hey, Maharaj, you there? <laughs> yeah, come on in. Oh, I didn't know who he was. He said, I'm your god brother. <laughs> okay. <laughs> and he said, I have a problem. <laughs> I have a question. You said that, you know, that uh, uh, Balaram appears as Ananga Manjari, the younger sister of Radharani, and Madhurya Rice. Where is that in the Shastra? <laughs> <laughs> I never heard of it. He didn't like it either. <laughs> it seemed for him to be too far out for him to ha handle. So um, I said, well, mm -hmm. I don't really have a scriptural reference, but I do have one reference. I said, I heard it from Radha Swami. <laughs> he said, oh, okay. <laughs> so I got through that one <laughs> somehow. <laughs> so if you don't know at least the authority of the scriptures, you, you quote the great souls in the movement <laughs> who have, uh, have more knowledge <laughs> So I was saved by that one. <laughs> so yeah, but it is there. But if anybody knows where it's mentioned, I would be happy to also learn about that. But it is mentioned. So these are some of the pastimes of Lord Balaram. There are much, there's so much we could speak about Lord Balaram. Does anybody have a particular leela of Lord Balaram they would like to hear? Anything? Or, yeah. Oh, the chess match yeah, with uh, Rukmi and the King of Kalinga. Yeah. Okay. 
I don't know if it's here. Hmm. Well, if it's here, I can read it, but I don't think so. I only have 46 pages to look through. <laughs> <laughs> it looks good, but I don't know what's there. <laughs> so, um, yeah. Rukmi was really angry with Krishna because his sister Rukmini got married to Krishna and he wanted Shishupal, powerful demon who was in the opposition to Krishna, to marry his sister. But Rukmini, her heart has already set her and her mind were fixed on Krishna. So it was arranged also. And Krishna came and captured Rukmini. And it was a big fight by some of the soldiers who were there, uh, Shishupal's army, and there were other armies. And Krishna and Balaram f fought these, these uh, attacking soldiers, and Krishna came away with Rukmini. And that was his principal queen in Dwarka. So Rukmini didn't like really Krishna or Balaram. So he was thinking how to get back. So he wanted, uh, he challenged. Uh, he challenged uh, Krishna to a, a chess match, but Krishna said, no, Balaram can do it. <laughs> and Balaram, he can't play chess so good. <laughs> he's expert at everything, but it seems like that it's mentioned he's not so good. So there was this chess match, and um, they were wagering different amounts of gold. We started off with like, you know, 10 gold coins, and then, uh, so the first match, uh, the King of Kalinga, he was supposed to be the person who was judging who's the actual winner. But he was favoring Wukmi. <laughs> it, was a, it was a setup. <laughs> and so Balaram lost the first match. He lost the next match, which was a higher stakes. He lost the next one. Balaram's getting angry because he's losing all the time. <laughs> he gets kind of angry sometimes. And uh, so he, his anger is just increasing. Krishna's there along with Rukmini, and Krishna's not saying anything. He's watching. <laughs> and, uh, and so, uh, because Krishna doesn't want to favor Balaram because it may, look, may make Rukmini feel unhappy because that's her brother. And he doesn't want to follow or favor Rukmi because it may make Balaram unhappy. So he remains somewhat just a neutral, you know, onlooker. So it's going on. Finally, they they, they wager something like ten thousand gold coins, and Balaram won. He actually won the match, but Rukmi. But Rukmi said, no, I won. And Balaram said, no, and they start arguing. And then the king of Kalinga, he came in and said, no, no, Rukmi won. So Balaram couldn't take it anymore. <laughs> so he took out his club, he smashed Rukmi. And then the king of Kalinga, every time Rukmi would win, he would smile and he had this big smile, he had really nice teeth, <laughs> you know, he went to the best, best dentist, you know, he had all of the best surgery, and he had, he had this big, and so Balaram just gave him a little dental work. <laughs> 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 Any dentist is here? <laughs> and all, he, then he had to go back to the dentist, but that he, there was no dentist to go to because that was the end of him. <laughs> So, Balaram, so Krishna's watching the whole thing, and Rukmini's, Rukmini's getting all distressed because her brother is getting beat up. <laughs> so yeah, so Balaram, he gets angry. He does. He gets angry sometimes, and, and then he shows his anger. But it's transcendental because his anger is always for the benefit of others. So that's a particular pastime. Uh, any other pastimes that that seems to be interesting to devotees? Yes, that you have your hand up like that. 
No, okay. Be careful. <laughs> you, you, anything below, above the elbow is, you know, as an arm raise. <laughs> Oh yeah, we can. That one I have here. I can re just read it really quickly. Mm -hmm. See, Jamuna Devi chastised. It's just a little synopsis. Once Lord Balaram, who was living in Dwarka, came back to stay in Vrindavan for two months. At this time, he enjoyed his pastimes with his gopi <coughs> friends, who were different from the gopis of Krishna. Enjoying such pastimes on the bank of the Jamuna at Ramgat, the Lord summoned Jamuna so that he could sport in the waters. When Jamuna Devi did not respond, Lord Balarup took up his favorite weapon, his plow, and began to drag Jamuna in a hundred streams. Understanding the position of Balaram, Jamuna Devi personally appeared and offered her obeisances to the Lord with many prayers in his glorification. Thus appeased, the Lord entered and bathed in the waters of the river. So it says even today, when, when she first initially didn't respond, Balaram got angry and he hit his plow into the ground and he dissected her waters into different streams. And it says even today that is the, the, the situation. That was all done by Lord Balaram. So, and then Balaram was happy. As she came, she offered beautiful prayers. She acknowledged that she didn't recognize who he was. And she was very apologetic, very humble, and glorified Balaram in a nice way. And Balaram was pleased. And then, of course, he took the opportunity along with his gopis. Because it says Balaram has a set of gopis that are different than Krishna's gopis when he dances the rasa dance. And these are younger gopis. And so they all came together with Lord Balaram and they were playing various types of water sports. <laughs> and Balaram enjoys that. <laughs> so that particular pastime is there. There's a nice picture of that drawing where Balaram is there and Jamuna is like like this, offering her prayers. Mm. So the pastimes of the Lord, and it says, Satam Pasangam Mamavirya Sambido Bhavanti Ritkarna Rasayana Kata. That in the association of devotees, if we hear and chant the glories of the Lord, and then this becomes Rasayana. It's sweet, it's nectar. And it goes to the ear and heart and charms the mind and, and awakens our attraction for the Supreme Personality of Godhead. And the more we hear the pastimes of the Lord and the more we absorb ourselves in hearing these pastimes, the more we aw awaken our attraction and our attachment for Krishna. It's automatic. Because Krishna's pastimes, Krishna's activities, his qualities, Balaram's, all of these things are on the spiritual platform and they awaken the soul's natural love for the Lord. When we chant the holy name, we're awakening our love for Krishna. When we're hearing about the Lord and it's gradually developing and as we practice that in a very continuous way, and then we become more and more Krishna conscious. And this is the essence of Krishna consciousness. The essence of Krishna consciousness is to hear and chant the glories of the Lord. And if we continue to do that in a regular way with, with devotees who and enthusiastically participate, then all of your problems are gone. <laughs> Sometimes people say, Maharaj, got a problem. I said, well, how's your rounds? So <laughs> I answer by saying that. Are you chanting regularly? Are you going to the kirtan? So you're taking time to associate with devotees. And then if you do that, you'll find you'll have less problems. Problems are due to not enough Krishna consciousness. <coughs> That's all it is. <laughs> and especially hearing and chanting the glories of the Lord. So we have five minutes before we are where we conclude, is there any questions or comments? Nice to see so many wonderful devotees here. Uh, Kandita? 
Thank you for coming. Wow, it's really a pleasure to see you. Hare Krishna. And uh, I'm bad with names, but our dazzling martial artist. <laughs> Dina Dayal, yeah, he's very merciful. <laughs> thank you, Prabhu, and so many wonderful devotees. Thank you for all coming. It's a very special day, and there's a wonderful feast waiting for everyone and glorification. When we were, when I was in New Vrindavan, uh, on Balaram's appearance day, we would always offer him a large bowl of honey. <laughs> And that was the favorite prasadam of the devotees, <laughs> to get that honey <laughs> after it was offered to Lord Valaram. So, yeah. And there's a pastime related to that and how Balaram got drunk, intoxicated on a beverage called Varuni. Varuni beverage is honey liquor. So Balaram, he... He's transcendental to all of these things that we do. When we do these things, we get in trouble. <laughs> but when he does it, it becomes a source of great happiness for everything, everybody. <laughs> Any comments, questions Any, by anyone? Yes, Mataji? <laughs> uh, thank you so much for responding to your comments. I just have a very short question. <laughs> uh, we take was, long questions too. <laughs> <laughs> I was wondering um, where was this, uh, where could we find how, which demon represents which um, qualities of us? Yeah, Bhakti Vinod Thakur has written one book called Chaitanya Shikshamrita. <laughs> mm -hmm. And Srila Prabhupada actually has recommended that devotees in this can read that book by Srila Bhakti Vinoda. Towards the end, he lists 20 different demons and the different anarthas like that. And devotees in our movement have also extracted that section given seminars on that, called the Demons of Vrindavan, which describe the different demons, the anarthas, and the commentaries, in some cases, by great personalities like Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati and Jiva Goswami. They give commentaries explaining what these anarthas are. So, uh, if you want something like that, I have a copy of that, a soft copy, I can send it to you or to anyone who wants it. If I have one email address, I can send it to will be a foundation to distribute it to the other devotees, and we can do it that way. Who would like to volunteer their email? Krishna Prema, oh you? Krishna Prema Rupa, I can send it to you, and anybody that wants it can go for it. And it's, it's interesting, because these are the things we struggle with in our Krishna consciousness. <laughs> Thank you so much. Anyone else? <laughs> yes? Remind me about this. After Prashad, not before, I'll forget. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much, Maharaj. Um, you repeatedly mentioned how we have to pray to the spiritual master. And you also mentioned how Prabhupada said that you just take my shelter and I will kick out these mm -hmm. uh, difficulties. Like Prabhupada said that how he is so capable of kicking out uh, these difficulties that we have if we properly surrender to Srila Prabhupada. Yeah. So um, a question arose in my heart that uh, how do we properly surrender to Srila Prabhupada? Because every day we make some effort. So. Well. The essence or the foundation by which surrender develops is, you know, to hear regularly from the spiritual master, understand the instructions and carry it out. And that's the, that's the preliminary. If we don't do that, then we'll find ourselves always 
coming to the spiritual master with so many problems. <laughs> the problem is we don't really take the instructions to heart and follow them completely. And, com and therefore that requires questions sometimes. How should we follow the instructions? How do they apply to me in my situation? Like that. But complete surrender means Manaso deho geho yo get you more arpilu to alpade nanda kishor. My dear nanda kishor Krishna Bhakti Vinoda praise. My home, my possessions, my family, my very body, it's yours. It belongs to you. Everything I have is simply your mercy. And therefore, it is my duty to use everything I have in your service. So try to use whatever Krishna gives you in Krishna's service. In this, and you won't have any problems. <laughs> is that we make a division between this is mine and this is Krishna's. <laughs> uh, that's a problem. That this is full of surrender. <laughs> But when we run into problems, or then we consult <laughs> or either Shastra, Guru, or qualified devotees who can guide us. And that is the purpose of our ISKCON movement, is to create a, a family type mood where we can help and assist each other in our practice of devotional service. So Prabhupada's idea is whatever you need, you can find it in the association of devotees. So we should be in that mood. Hmm. Uh, what is the biggest problem? Hmm, the mind. <laughs> you got it. <laughs> the mind is always telling us something else. You know, don't become too Krishna conscious because you'll be a fanatic. <laughs> and then you won't be able to enjoy those things that you really want to enjoy. <laughs> and Maya will tell you that. But there's no such thing as too Krishna conscious. It's, it's, there's always not enough. <laughs> because Krishna consciousness means fulfillment of all desires and all and all the aspirations we're ever looking for in life. Simply by engaging in devotional service and particularly hearing and chanting the glories of the Lord. That's the fast track. And Bhaktivedanta Thakur, after he explains all the anarthas, all the demons connected with it, all of the steps by which one can eliminate the anarthas, and he says, and if you want to get rid of the anarthas fast, just do kirtan. <laughs> Stay in the kirtan. <laughs> this is where the anarthas go and leave quickly. Keep that kirtan mood too. And what is that mood of kirtan? Glorification of the Lord and the association of the voice. That is the mood of kirtan. Okay, so yeah, speaking, uh, I think seven o'clock is is uh, Gorarti? Yes, yes. Okay. So thank you very much. Have a wonderful remaining evening on glorification of Lord Balaram. Hare Krishna. Srila Prabhupada Kija. Jai.